To check if the right side reflection matters as we test the PML, let's see how far electromagnetic fields will propagate in the grid over the nmax time steps we're running the simulation. Since there is free space to the right of the source, the wave will be propagating at the speed of light. So it will travel C times nmax times dt over the length of the simulation. So that's C times 35,000 times dt, which you can get from your code, I get about 149 meters. So the pulse will propagate 149 meters over the time span of the simulation. Let's compare this number to the distance between the source and the right edge of the grid. The distance from the source to the right edge of the grid is I max times 3 fourths, since our source is 1 fourth of the way across the grid, times delta. So that's 25,000 for I max times 3 fourths times 4.3 e to the minus 3, and I get about 80 meters. So at first it may seem like we need to lengthen the grid, but what matters for this test is not whether the wave reaches the right side of the grid, say this is i equal to i max, and this is our source. So our observation point is over here. So we don't really care about this reflection. What we care about is whether it propagates all the way back to our observation point during the time span of the simulation. And the round trip propagation distance is about 160 60 meters, about double that. And that is longer than the 149 meters the wave will propagate during the simulation. So in other words, we do not need to increase IMAX in order to run this test of the PML. Here is a plot of the relative error that I obtained over time. You can see it peaked out around 3.2 e to the minus 5, meaning the reflection error is about 5 orders of magnitude lower than the amplitude of the incident wave. This is much lower than the errors that radiation boundaries typically provide before PM provided before PML came along. Typical errors for radiation boundary conditions were down by a factor of 100 or maybe 1,000 or so, so on the order of 1e e to the minus 2 or 1e e to the minus 3, depending on the angle of incidence. Often you will see the relative error plotted on a log scale as shown here. So the y-axis is a log scale. You can create a plot like this using semi log y, and then you can plot the error. So this plot is showing the same information as on the last slide. We get the same amplitude here. It's just on a log scale. By the way, as a last note about this, make sure you pay attention to the amplitudes of the values you are plotting. If we were to plot the EZ fields from i equal 1 to i equal i max divided by 4, so this is where the source is located, at the end of the simulation, this is what we would see if you ran it for 35,000 time steps like I did, which at first it looks alarming. Look at all this junk propagating around in our grid. But if you look at the amplitude, it's at 1 e to the minus 6, which is roughly 5 to 6 orders of magnitude lower than the result we're actually interested in. Our initial wave had an amplitude of 1. So this is just noise, and the absorbing material is working as expected. I'm going to stop here today because I think it's really important to have a working PML before we move on to working on the rest of our model.